Do you guys remember that video where I upgraded my Havencraft starter deck with a bunch of orders from TCG Player? What if I did that again, but we're building a whole deck from scratch? Bit of a disclaimer before we get started, I was able to pick up a couple of pretty significant buffs to the deck once I went to locals, so that'll change my original build a little bit from the $20 I spent online. However, real quick day one recap of the event. Round one, end up losing the Swordcraft. TLDR, I have a little bit of an issue dealing with those early game rush decks, so you can do so much to them. Game two, Abyss, got there. Had the tempo going just right, I was able to basically win the game with some control and a little bit of burn. Then, round 3 was a mirror match with another spell chain deck. Very much more of a tug of war. Interesting to see the deck played different ways. However, I did make one slight mistake towards the end where I killed something with a quick play spell that I could have killed with like three other options in my hand. They went for the OTK in turn after that. If I had that quick place, I could have got rid of one of the threats and been able to survive with a little bit more life than be able to tempo it around and swing the game in my favor. So there was a chance that I could have gone 2-1. Mistakes will be made when you learn your deck. But let's go ahead and see what I'm actually running now. I suppose it might be more accurate to say that I just kind of added more cards onto the original deck. Because as you may remember, in Shadowverse, you could have between 40 and 50 cards in a deck and this definitely leads more towards the latter. I think we're looking at about 46 right now at the time of recording. So I am of course using the Dimension Shift version of Spell Chain, which this card is a 12 drop, but it basically costs seven if you pay the condition. And when you do that, you get to take another turn. That's right, maybe we were talking time walk. I'm only running two copies in here because while it is the win condition, this deck does have quite a bit of searchability and we, like I said, 46 cards, we are clogging a lot already. So two seems like it's gonna be pretty easy to hit. Just might not hit it three times a game like you're supposed to or whatever. Yes, of course, the spell chain deck, we do want to drop a lot of spells. I am maxing out on Sorcery Catch, which is a quick play card that says you check your top four, reveal a spell at the hand, then you can reveal another spell, put it in the graveyard, and the other two go to the bottom of the deck. So effectively, it's going to let you stack two at bottom, which is whatever. The more important part is that this now nets you about three different spells, one being played, one that's going to the drop zone, and another getting out of your hand. So it's a great way to ramp up your spell chain. The vast majority of our spells are basically going to be destruction kind of cards, ways that you're able to deal damage to something or outright destroy it in order to tempo and just get to your win condition a little easier. This set is more of a late game deck, but we are playing a lot of kids like this that help you get to there a lot faster. Real quick one, rundown. Surefire is one of the newer cards, quick play deals 3 to something, 4 of it's evolved. We run 2 of that. This combos very well with one of our evolved units, which we'll talk about in a minute. Basically three damage, and if you do have something evolved on the board, you get to draw a card. So not quick, but five damage and it possibly draws your card. So this doubles up on our draw effects. This is a generic card. I just like it because it deals a lot of damage and also deals two to leader. This is great because I am trying to maximize on effects that let you also have burn damage on top of the structure that they give you. So if I have a lot of damage, you are going to see it a lot easier in this but it does also deal two of them, so that's pretty good. Another card is similar. This. It just outright kills something as a quick play, which is really good if you have four floating. If you are on your spell chain 10, it's also going to deal three to them, so if you can save this for later, awesome. If not, you need to pop something, also awesome. Versatile card's versatile. This, uh, these are, this is just a one drop. Deals two and deals four if you're on spell chain. Neat. I don't like it because it's not quick, that's why I'm not maxing it out, because you will find that a lot of times, this being a reactive deck, you basically just play for turn, pass, oh look there's a guy, pop it. Because that we're also running these two quick spells, that each cost one, this one's going to be able to deal one to everything for more of a carpet bomb, this one deals two to something, which better if there's some with two defense I guess, I don't know. I ultimately do want to make it two of these, but right now... I only have one and one because if I just go around buying singles, if you want to help support me and make sure the deck's right, 
TCG player, phrase energy. Y'all know the drill. I like this card a lot. It's three damage to a follower or three damage to them. Very versatile, like I said, you can burn their face off with nothing to do, and if there is a guy, you can kill it, so. Very good, we max it out. Rhyme Winds is a one of in here, just, we're gonna get to some one of these are two one of right here. Quack. So Rhyme Wind is a quick play that lets you pop something and put it into their hand, or if you're at Spell Chain, put it on top of deck instead. This is great because it slows them down, and your base ability to put it back in their hands not only gonna get around things that prevent destruction, since you're just bouncing it, but like it does slow them down one turn by resetting their cost since haste does not exist unless you have a haste ability. And even better, if you get to that spell chain, puts on top of their deck, so not only that, but you're also slowing them down to turn on the draw. This is just good, I need to get another copy of it. It lets you kill anything. Not just followers, you can also pop ambulance with it, which is great against certain matchups, like against Haven Crafter. Uh, I guess Dragon Craft does have its own variety of things that stay on the field now, so. This is a very good card. I would like to run a second if I could, but I think like once probably enough to the situational for its ability to pop what you want to pop, while the rest of your deck just takes care of creatures. Then this is a final destruction spell. I'm limping it in here because it also deals with the draw that we'll talk about in a second. It gives you the ability to choose two abilities, or it's will chain intending all three. You either get to deal something three damage, cool. You could summon out this dude, which is a 2-3 with ward, which is great because it gives you ward and the deck that doesn't really have too much defense otherwise or you can draw a card so really good i love the versatility of it it being four drop is a little slow because you want most of your stuff to start popping on turn two or three but like i said you are playing a reactive deck this unfortunately is not quick so basically it can be your turn for the turn but hey you're paying four to do two to three things so really good i do like maxing it out i just mentioned that's one of the tokens in the deck this is the other it's magical pawn i think next set we're gonna start getting the anime decks and one is the Magical chest board, I guess it's called, so. Uh, I might build that in the future, it looks kind of fun. You make this with this thing. It just, so one drop makes that. That can be your turn one if you don't have anything to do, just. Oh, here he goes, here's a guy. Next turn can swing for two, I guess. It's kind of good. Kind of filler, but very nice to help you generate board because you're not writing too many features in this deck. And finally, before we do talk about those followers, I just want to mention two more cards of our draw engine, and that is two Alter Fate, one Fate's Hand, mainly one because I only have the one promo from the demo thing and I never bothered to pick up another one but three drop lets you draw two cards and potentially recover a play point therefore if you are at your spell chain this becomes a two drop to draw two cards not bad it just uh, uh you um uh, so I'll, I'll probably pick up another one eventually this card's stupid it's a reset button what can I say this is a reset button it shuffles your hand back shuffles your opponent's hand back and you both redraw that amount it's really good to hold on to if you know your opponent's got a full board they might be trying to set something up or if you just have a really bad hand early game, you're like, haha, I hope you do too. I like it. Like, I might put it down to one, but like, I like that too. It feels pretty solid. All right, let's talk about some followers. So starting things off with our evolvers, we got three of this dork. This is draw one, discard one on place. Guess what he does on evolve? Same exact thing. This is really good because this helps you filter out all your spells that you don't need, therefore increase your spell shade a lot faster. Merlin is probably like the best card in the deck right now. And that's because it's a three drop that on place lets you search for a thing. And once you evolve, you can play something that's three or less for free. Like I said, this is the card that combos with Witch Bolt because it just evolves into this. You could say, oh, hey, search out Witch Bolt, play Witch Bolt, evolve, play Witch Bolt again this time you draw a card. So there's two chances to pop the exact same card and draw a card off it. Obviously, you only see two of these in my hand. I still need one more. You run three. Shut up, I'll get a third one eventually. Then probably one of my favorite cards from the trial deck is the Seaman Flame Mage. This cute little goth girl does nothing on her own. However, when she evolves, she becomes a two damage carpet bomb to everything, which combos great with all of your destruction spells. And if they have a bunch of little dudes, like say a force craft deck or sword craft they just form with a bunch of little tokens. There they go. Boop. And now you're a cute little goth witch. And the final card in the evolved deck, which I cannot wait to replace. I literally have one copy of the main one two in the evolution because the second one turns into Merlin, and then after that this turns into a tech one of for a thing so uh they're in here for now i question if you actually need 10 cards in your ball deck if because if not this turns into literally anything else or just your gets removed on place you do check your top card if it's spell you out to your hand this is good in theory because it gives you a free plus one however it can whiff very easily and i swear to god Although I'm playing very little creatures in this deck, I think just the 10 evolutions plus these five I'll show you. So a total of 15 compared to about 30 spells. 
I do not see a spell off him ever. Every single time I have ever played this card, I have whiffed off it and it made me sad that I wasted two play points on this compared to anything else I could be playing. So, can't we give him the axe? His evolution is not bad though, just drop a spell from your hand, deal for it or something. It's again a good use of a discard to help increase your spell chain while doing four damage or something, so not bad. But this just becomes anything. I know the starter that comes with a Penguin Wizard, which is like another copy of Craig, or I have some tech ideas in mind, but like. It's just, this becomes anything, once I get anything. Man, found two cards in the deck, are two more awesome cards we're gonna talk about. First of all, we got three, Runeblade Summoner. This check is a 1-1 one, one for three, which kind of looks sus. However, she has two spell chain abilities. On spell chain five, she gets plus four, plus four, making her a five, five. And if you happen to be at spell chain 10, she also gets Storm, your quick attack for the deck. So if you're there late game, your dog went up, five, five swing. If you're not there late game, your dog went up on the 5 5 still, which is pretty not bad. It's a threat that needs to be taken care of, or it's going to start pinging their face every single turn, plus all of your destruction spells getting rid of the field. And last but not least, this is one of the win conditions for the deck, which is why I'm not sure why I only ordered two of him. You have this boy, the 9 cost 7 7 Flame Destroyer, who is a rush. That is your quick attack that can only attack followers, unfortunately, but whatever. It's like common looking card, it's cool, silver. But the most important part is his 9 cost does not matter. You're looking at spell chain abilities. Spell chain fine if it costs three less, therefore being a six drop. Spell chain ten it costs six less, therefore being a three drop. And spell chain fifteen, which is like your highest spell chain of anything in the deck, is literally free. So if you do get to that fifteen, it's a free seven seven swinger. The cool thing to do with these, of course, is if you do happen to be at your fifteen and you can make them free, drop drop, activate your time lock. You don't want to play these first because this is going to banish a bunch of spells, which might make them cost more. And then all of a sudden you have fourteen damage on board. Start your next turn, Slay 14. It's a deck that can time walk, does a lot of burn, and sometimes scries. Honestly though, did you guys expect me to be playing anything else? Always embrace the infinite.